Well, we received this from the ICP this morning. As of uh, today, our uh, response stats, vessels of opportunity, we have over 1,500 in the area. Skimmers, more than 830. Boom, uh, as of today, more than 3.47 million feet. We've recovered over 34.7 million gallons of skimmable oil. Welcome to a special Gulf Coast edition of West Wing Week. We spent this week traveling through communities along America's Gulf Coast to give you a special behind-the-scenes look at the federal government's historic and unprecedented effort to contain and clean up after the BP oil spill. We're approximately a mile from the site where uh, the Deepwater Horizon burned and sank in, uh, in April. And there's a number of uh, vessels here. We counted uh, 42 yesterday within about a quarter mile. It's the largest U.S. response to an oil spill in history. Uh, and it's, it's exceptional and somewhat unique to have uh, this many vessels in such close proximity. They're out here 24 by 7, and uh, they're, they're stationary until, uh, until the well is, is, uh, is effectively killed. In Pensacola, on the periphery of this bill, the emphasis is placed on two goals. Stop any remaining oil from reaching the shore and cleaning the beaches quickly when it does. We're located uh, in an area called Bayou Chico, close to uh, downtown Pensacola. And our operations have our boats concentrated uh, primarily around the pass. Who stands for a vessel of opportunity, and that's uh, essentially it's a term used to uh, explain uh, civilian boats that are contracted by BP to help mitigate the oil. Working with them has been a very good experience. They have a lot of local knowledge to offer. So far today, these, these vessels have collected 10 bags worth of, of uh, contaminated material. So right now, tonight, we have approximately 450 workers out here on the beach. Uh, it varies from night to night, depending on the, uh, the amount of impact. It takes everybody to make this happen. It takes the local, the county, the state, the federal government, BP, the contractors, port partners all across this area, all have to interface and work together and put the beaches in the Gulf Coast back into the condition it was before this event happened. We travel next to Mobile, where the response for Florida, Alabama, and Mississippi is coordinated by Captain Stephen Poulin of the United States Coast Guard. We have a plan. We had a plan from day one. We're ex executing that plan, and it's a great plan. It's worked. We're very uh, cautiously optimistic uh, that we'll be able to kill this well here in the very near future, but uh, this has been a tough road. Uh, this has been a complex uh, response, but now when the, with the cap on, uh, we're, feeling, we're feeling pretty good about where we're at, and uh, we continue to see less and less oil in the water and less oil hitting the beaches. What we're doing is trying to preserve a way of life down here for the citizens of the Gulf Coast. The beaches are open. This is a beautiful area. Um, there's still lots of summer left, so come down and enjoy the summer. Roughly 14 miles to the south, a facility in Theodore, Alabama, is the center for boom decontamination, repair, and redeployment back into the field. The boom here, you're looking at roughly 10,000 foot. Off the water today, they'll receive 10,000 foot or better today just off the water. Pascagoula, Mississippi is a regional headquarters for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, one of the government's main scientific authorities on the ocean. NOAA right now is um, focusing on reopening the closed fishing areas within the Gulf of Mexico. We have about uh, 18 vessels out there. Uh, we're focusing on sampling within that closed fishing area, um, analyzing those samples, and hopefully try to open up those areas. Now that the oil has stopped um, leaking into the Gulf, we can develop a much more comprehensive plan and just get in there and just intensively sample um, within that closed area. We're at the National Seafood Inspection Laboratory, which is part of the NOAA's National Marine Fishery Service. This is where we receive the samples, where um, we check them into our chain of custody system. The samples are usually then placed in a freezer. They're put in a queue for processing. The samples then are delivered to the dissection teams for taking samples for both sensory and chemical analysis. Each fish is carefully, if it's a large enough fish, is carefully dissected. So we take a fillet from one side, it's given to sensory and the other side of the fish, the other fillet, is given to uh, submitted for chemical evaluation. We've received over 2,600 samples so far. We're expecting to receive another three or 4,000 samples from federal waters. We're out collecting lots of samples right now, processing lots of samples to try to facilitate that process to get everything opened as quickly as reasonably can be done. In Robertsdale, we cross paths with the Secretary of the Navy, Ray Mavis. 
who is traveling the region meeting with residents at town halls to hear their concerns. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. My name is Ray Mavis. I'm Secretary of the Navy. And in mid-June, President Obama asked me to head up an effort to come up with a long-range restoration plan for the Gulf Coast. These town halls are all about getting input from people that live on the Gulf, work on the Gulf, raise their families here, about what we can do to restore the Gulf long term. Any plan that we do has got to come up from the Gulf. Any plan of work, any projects have got to start with the people who live here and work here. As we look at long range recovery, um, research and development, you know, we've talked about ways in our area to diversify the economy in the past. We know because of storms and now this type of instance we need to do that. We ought to be able to attract those research and development companies to come here that's going to look at that, look at your alternative fuel energy energies. Um, our fishermen, they want to work on the water, so if there's got to be delays, if this research and development needs to be doing, they need to be the ones employed to help get those samples and do that. Just we think that's an opportunity for some economic development in the future. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Y'all have helped a whole lot. And thank you for spending the time to come out here and do this. Appreciate it very much. Thank y'all. On Tuesday, August 3rd, we traveled to the Q4000 vessel about 47 miles off the shore and 5,000 feet above the ocean floor, where the static kill operation is underway to more permanently seal the leaking well. Well, currently we're in the middle of our pumping motor, our kill operation. You know, in the last uh, several days we've been rigging up, and you can see down on the deck the guys uh, working. That's the manifold that we're pumping all the mud from the boat. It's pretty involved. I mean, we have several ships alongside us. The BJ Blue Dolphin and HOS Centerline are both uh, providing the actual mud that we're using in conjunction with this operation. And literally, they're pumping through us. We're simply the means to pass the mud down to the bottom. We did our injectivity test this morning. Everything went well. They analyzed the data that they needed to, to determine what rates and pressures that we would possibly be seeing. We started pumping mud about 3 o'clock this afternoon. I mean, everything's looking good. We're satisfied. Pressure's coming down, and um, everything looks encouraging at this point. About an hour north of New Orleans is Hammond, Louisiana, home of the Hammond Wildlife Facility, a center for the care and cleaning of oiled animals newly constructed to accommodate wildlife affected by the spill. One of the common misconceptions out there is that when you see an oiled animal, it must be immediately washed. What it must get is immediate care, and that care is stabilization, it's nutritional and hydration therapy to bring it back to a physiological state where it's able to tolerate being washed. The oil uh, causes the bird to lose its waterproofing, and they become hypothermic because then they can't preen themselves and they can't keep their weather feathers uh, waterproofed. And it's very important that you remove the oils and that they can uh, uh, get back their resiliency. Making sure you have really solid release criteria and that you're putting an animal that you're confident that's going to go back out there and integrate into the population and be successful is really important. This vast operation is coordinated by the Unified Area Command, located in downtown New Orleans, where it's overseen by Admiral Zumkoff. 10.30 last night was the static kill of the Deepwater Horizon. Until we have a permanent well kill, we still have all skimmers, all people, uh, everybody ready should this situation uh, turn back on itself. But right now we're cautiously optimistic uh, that we're moving and progressing towards a permanent well kill. We really had an Army, a Navy, uh, and an Air Force uh, responding to this. We've had cutters come from as far away as Hawaii, Puget Sound, San Francisco to be here skimming oil. These are people that are committed to restoring the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, they are giving me everything they have, whether it's rescuing birds, uh, deploying boom, doing skimming operations. Uh, all of those people are part of my team, and, and I'm here to stand up for them and, and just applaud them for their extremely hard and valuable work. To find out more information on the BP oil spill and the federal response to control and contain it, visit whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week.